Well, go on, people. How's it going? So, um, today, sorry, I'm so tired. I woke up about six times last night. I kept having dreams. I was having some real weird dreams last night. Uh, about, um, about some of my mates from London and uh, Groot was in there from uh, Gardens of the Galaxy. Really, really, really odd. But anyway, so today I'm going to talk about yeah, um, a very old friend of mine that I used to hang around with down the park parade. His name was Prentice. Um, this guy, yeah, he was proper naughty. Yeah, he was a he was a sound guy. He was a sound guy. Um, he used to uh, he could climb any drain pipe, like literally any drain pipe. He would get up this drain pipe in like two seconds. Like so, the side of the shops so there was loads of drain pipes. And he could literally get onto like roofs and stuff really, really easily. It was crazy. He was he was basically like a ferret, yeah. Um, he was pro proper naughty guy, like you know. I say that we all were. I mean, come on, we were teenagers. So you go in the shops, you 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 you'd steal a drink or fizzy or something like that. You know, just little things like. We all did it at some point, you know, in our lives. It's like for the thrill, for the buzz, to show off in front of your mates, wasn't it? So anyway, so Chris Prentice, yeah, um, he lived above the shops, the park parade, Cozy Corner. And um, he was a very good mate of mine. He was an absolute, literally, he was just an absolute nightmare. Like, <laughs> I shouldn't really use that word. He was sad, I loved him to bits, like he was my best mate, but he could... Um, like me and him, we used to walk to school in the mornings together when we went to Ramsey, Sir William Ramsey. Uh, we were always late, even though we only lived down the road from the school. We used to um, we used to smoke a bit of weed together, a bit of hash really back then. You didn't have any of this modern day skunk that blows your mind. Um, it was all very weak THC hash and maybe a bit of Thai stick, maybe a bit of block weed. That's all you got back then. Bit of purple ways, no more than that. A little bit of super skunk here and there, but people didn't really, yeah, people didn't really sell it. It was just something that it was hard to get hold of. Anyway, so Chris Prentice, I'm um, going to tell you a couple of stories. Like, So when Hazemir Foodle was there in the park parade, it's now the big co-op down there, but when it was Hazemir Foodle, we used to uh, go in there, me and Chris, and we'd like, we'd go in, Go grab our like go grab go grab some um like sweets and stuff whatever we'd buy sweets but Chris would normally end up putting a few in his pocket like you always did um so we got so we've walked in there and Chris has got um he was he smoked cigarettes so he was just to chip it on the wall as we walked in and then just put it in his pocket but he's walked in he hasn't actually checked to see if it's out gone out properly so he's walked in he's stuck the cigarette in his pocket we've walked round to the switch which, which was sort of near the back of the shop and he's just sort of like started looking around seeing if he, he start putting something then all of a sudden a bloke's walked up to him and obviously chris is like oh shit i've been spotted sort of thing yeah and this bloke's like excuse me mate your pocket's smoking and literally yeah we've looked down at his pocket cigarettes on fire in his pocket see the smoke pouring out he's ran out of that shop yeah as fast as possible and just thrown his jacket on the floor and just stamped on it um luckily put this put the jacket out um that was quite funny another time me and chris were walking around and we were like how can we get some money and we literally have walked past which was nat west bank at the time on the park parade it's now a chip shop and as we've walked past, this bloke's walked away from the from the uh, cash machine, and the cash machine's still going beep 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 beep, which normally means there's still money in the mon in the money slot bit that's coming out. So me and Chris have turned around, and looked at the cash machine. There's thirty pounds in still sticking out the cash machine, and the guy's walking off that way. So Chris has ran over, grabbed it. These two women have looked at me and Chris have, is to say, "That's not yours." And then Chris, Chris has said to the woman, I'm going to go and give it to the, I'm going to go and give it to the man. And Chris has ran that way. And I've just stood there like looking at the women like, oh dear shit. So I've ran back with Chris. Um, Chris was crazy. Like literally he would do anything. Like I remember the older lot, they used to, they put Chris in a sleeping bag one time and filled it up with, um, with lighter gas. 
and then got him really high. Another, I remember another time um, that we put him in a tr in a in a food or tr shopping trolley, and next to the food all with what the co-op is now, you've got a hill that goes down, and then it goes into the main road, which is um, oh god, I can't think what it's called now. Is it Western? Is it Western Dean? It was rather Western or Eastern Dean. So basically, my mind shot. By the way, that's why I can't remember certain names and stuff. But anyway, so the link goes onto this main road, and we put Chris in a shopping trolley and we pushed him down the link. And as he's gone down this hill, he's got to the main road, and then you've literally got so there's two cars going like that, yeah. So these two cars have gone like that. As these two cars are like this, Chris has gone in between the two cars, yeah, in his shopping trolley. How he didn't get hit by this shopping trolley, we don't know, yeah. But he's literally, he's gone through, he's hit the curb, yeah. And then he's like literally flown out of the shopping trolley, landed, we've gone over like a, a five foot fence and landed in his front garden, got up and walked off. Like the guy was indestructible pretty much. Like he just used to always do stuff like, always like, he was very clumsy, yeah, even though he was very dangerous, he could have been like he could have worked in a circus or something. That guy, uh, he's a funny guy as well. Um, I'm trying to think of another story with him. Oh, here's another, here's one. So that that West Bank, right? We used to climb up on top of that roof, and we had we actually put a sofa up there, and we'd actually sit on the sofa, and then you could see the whole of the park parade. You could see when the police were coming. You could see when everyone was walking down the parade. Um, and one day we're sat up there, we're smoking a bit of hash. And next to the NatWest Bank, there was like a stairwell. So there's a carpet shop in the NatWest Bank and a stairwell that goes up to the flats where Chris lived. And so um, we've, we're, sat, we're sat up on top of this roof, just me and him smoking a bit of hash. And then like we've looked, we've heard someone staggering around the corner of the carpet shop and then they've thrown up. Yeah, they've obviously come out to see this pub, which is no longer there now. It's actually a block of flats. So they've, he's, they, this bloke's thrown up, yeah, he's obviously had too much to drink. And uh, he's then staggered off. And then this mouse has come out of nowhere and started eating the little bits of food out of the sick. And me and Chris were like, oh my God, that's disgusting. We were like, what, 13 at the time? 12, 13, something like that. So we've jumped off of the, um, we've climbed down off the roof, ran down. We've, we're chasing this mouse around the park parade, yeah, for a good 30 minutes. It's ran over to a wheel and it's gone into the hubcap, yeah. And it's got these little holes in the hubcap, right? So we're trying to get this mouse. All of a sudden, this mouse has ran out of this wheel, and I've just jumped, yeah. Like I'm gonna, I'm trying to jump on it, yeah. But I wasn't, I wasn't. But I've jumped and I've literally jumped on it, bang, squashed it, and I was just like, oh my god, I felt so bad after that. I'm not gonna lie. Um. But yeah, Korean Chris, we used to we used to hang around a lot. We used to hang around with our mate Katie Holbrook. Uh, there was another one. Uh, his girlfriend was uh, Sarah. I think it was. I think her name was Sarah Pond. And we used to go down Roberts Road in High Wycombe to go and hang out with her and her brother Nigel. Um, yeah, and then I was with a girl called Amy Haynes while he was with Sarah. Um, they were like the year above us at school. But yeah, me and Chris, we were we used to go to Devon um, together. His dad lived in Devon because his mum and dad were divorced, and um, his dad lived next to Barnstable Head uh, Police Stations, but it was like the headquarters, big old uh, building. And um, his dad grew cannabis and lots of it in his back garden. He had a block of hash, and it was like this big, yeah, look in a triangle type shape, yeah. He had ice cream tubs, the, the three litre ice cream tubs, yeah, I don't even know if they do ice cream tubs this big anymore, but they used to do big ass ice cream tubs, and he had ice, like five, six ice cream tubs of that full of weed, and um, his dad used to drive, and he used to steer with his knees while he was skinning up, yeah, this is all back in the 90s, um, when we were, when me and Chris were down there, in Devon, we, um, we went down to walk to the park to go and smoke a bit of hash, which we stole off his dad. <laughs> and uh, and we were sat there rolling up, and this bloke's walked, and then he stopped and looked at us. So I put the I put the smoke like that next to me, 
And then all of a sudden, the bloke walked up and he was like, "I'm an I'm a, I'm an undercover I'm a I'm an off-duty policeman. What are you guys doing? Because you look suspicious." And we were like, uh, "Nothing." And he said, "Stand up." So I stood up and he's seen the joint. And I was like, "Oh my god!" And then he's turned around and he's looked at us and he said, "Listen, I'm gonna search you. If I find any more on you, I'm gonna have to take you in." But he says, "I don't want to take you in because I'm off duty." But what I will do is, if I don't find any on you, I'm going to take this joint that you're about to roll and throw it in that drain, and then I don't want to see you down in this park doing this ever again. Otherwise, I will have to arrest you. Now, if I was 14 at the time, 14 or 15, if I would have got arrested, Chris's dad lived in Devon. My parents lived in Hazelmere High Wycombe. If I would have got arrested, they would have had to have been called by the police, and my mum and dad, or my mum and or my dad, would have had to have come to Devon to sit in the interview room with me. I would have been in a world of shit. Um, yeah. So Chris Prentice and me, we used to just another time. Here's here's one more story. Yeah. So one day, yeah, we're sat. Um, this was um, we were like sixteen doing our GCSE, so we'd uh, we'd got half a day off school. So we're sat behind, um, it was Eddie Bates's house, it was the, the meadow up there, which was right next to the crossroads, and um, we, was, we just smoked our last joint, and then all of a sudden, we see some, like, you, well, you could see they were police, yeah, like one was in plain clothes and one was in clothes, but there was also a dog with them, yeah, now, obviously, we were like, we were like, oh, shit, it's the police, They've walked over to us and they're like, what are you two doing here? Because we had our school bags with us and we were like, well, we just finished our exams. So like, we just, we just sat in here just waiting, like, you know, we're going to go home in a minute. And they were like, well, we need to search you now. And what had happened, there was a burglary in one of the houses that was attached to this field. And so we were like, oh, okay, yeah, you can search us. But Chris, <laughs> for some reason... He had his sister's watch in his bag. So obviously when they've opened up his bag and they've looked and they've seen this woman's watch, this girl's watch, they're like, why have you got this for? Who does this belong to? And Chris was like, oh, it's my sister's. They had to get the owner of the house that had been burgled to look at this watch to say if it was theirs or not. Because obviously, I mean, if that, if that would have been the same watch his wife had that had been stolen, it could have been a whole different story. Um, but luckily, these uh, the, 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 the owners of the house just looked at the watch and said, no, they've got nothing to do with us at all. So Chris was fine. But when when they were searching us, I had to stand up first and get searched. So arms out, da da da, pat you down, pat you down, look for your bag, look for your bag. Chris is just sat on the floor eating his wagon wheel, yeah? His police dogs jumped at Chris to try and take the wagon wheel off him. And Chris is like, whoa, whoa, like freaking out because he thought the dog was trying to attack him. And the police were like, oh, no, 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 it's just because you're eating food. And he, it's what it is, you're eating food. Yeah, so there you go. And that was a couple of little stories of me and Chris Prentice. Chris Prentice, like I said, he was the best climber you'd ever met in your life. Like, he could literally climb up any drain pipe. He could get on any roof. He could break into pretty much any building. Um, He was pretty good. He was pretty weaselly, pretty, like... You know, like, like a little ferret, like he was a nutcase, absolute nutcase. But um, I haven't seen Chris in a long time. I heard that he moved to Devon. He's got a family and he's married and all that. I also heard that his old man passed away of cancer, so RIP to him. Um, had many, many fond memories of that guy. Uh, it was good, good, good time of my life, you know, exploring, just being kids, getting in trouble, making bonfires, throwing deodorant cans on fires. That sort of thing. That's all we used to do. Smoke a bit of weed, drink some cider, hang out with the older kids. Um, and just, yeah, just growing up in Hazelmere. Just doing what you're doing, isn't it? It's just all fun and games. But anyway, people, so there you go. That was a bit of a story about um, my teens and uh, my good old mate, Chris Prentice. Um, hope everyone enjoys their day. I hope everyone's having a good time. And uh, peace, love, and uh, speak to you all soon, yeah?